Welcome to the Nature Journal Connection. I'm your host, John Muir Laws. Today, let's take a closer look at using color in our nature journals. Color's all around us, and it's one of the things that makes exploring this world just so amazing and beautiful. If you've got a system of getting yourself to both be able to notice more details about color and be able to record that in your nature journal, it'll open all sorts of doors. The best way to start to include color in your nature journal is to get yourself a small set of colored pencils and a little handheld pencil sharpener. This is the kit that you need. Too many pencils and you'll spend all your time trying to figure out is it this green or is it this green? There's just a small set. You'll go right to the one that you want. You don't need a million pencils. I'm gonna show you how with this many pencils you can make just about every color that is out here. And it's a lot of fun to do. Let me show you how I pick out which pencils to use for whatever project I'm doing. What I do is I first look at the color and I'm going to try to, you know, here's a, here's a piece of an ice plant. It's kind of got some orangish in it, greenish. Eh. You know, I do not have a pencil that is specifically this color. That's not a problem. What I do is I look through the whole set and, and I say, okay, this color right here, it's kind of close, right? Um, and that's, that's a good start. So I get some color that's sort of more or less my base color. So that'll be my base color. And then I think, you know, how do I want to modify this? Well, in some places, it's a little bit more yellowish than that. I'm gonna pull out a yellow. Actually, I'm gonna pull out this yellow green here. So, you know, sometimes like this, sometimes it's leaning a little bit more towards this. Over here, I've got another whole pack of pencils. These are my bright, vivid colors over here. Over here, I've got dull greens, grays, browns, those sorts of things. And I'm gonna look through those. Uh, okay, I'm gonna pull this one into it. So now I've got these three pencils to play with this color. And, and what I'm gonna do is instead of just going, okay, this part's orange and you know coloring in orange, I am going to test out on the side of my paper. I'm going to make a little scribble of color and then see if I can match, um, if that color matches, that's great. Usually never does on, on the first try. And then what I'm gonna do is put, see what happens if I put another color over on top of that first color. If you press too hard with your first color, you're not gonna be able to add color on top of it. So here's the big secret. Let me say that again, this is the big secret. What you do is you put in a light layer and then another light layer on top of that and then another light layer on top of that. You can keep layering up colored pencils and you can blend them together on the page. Right? So don't just get in there and go, eh, it's yellow. No, 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 no. Okay, start with your basic base color. And then we're gonna tweak it. We're gonna modify it by putting in a little bit of this, a little bit of this, a little bit of this. As your drawing goes on, towards the end of the drawing, that's when you're gonna start to start, you're gonna start to push a little bit harder. But at the start, keep your layers light and build up a bunch of different layers of color. And you can find with a small set of colored pencils, you can make everything out here. And that's where colored pencils really come into their own. So again, the rookie move is just to <clears throat> press hard right at the start and go like, it's red, I've got my red pencil, boom. Mm -mm, mm -mm. No, 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 go lightly, go lightly. Put down that base coat and then build that up with another one, build on top of that. And then you'll see, you'll be able to blend those, those colors right on the page. And now colored pencils are working for you in a totally different way.
There are three primary colors, cyan, yellow, and magenta. You need these colors in your kit. One of the best ways to train yourself how to mix colors with pencils is to build a color circle. To use only these three primary colors and to mix a ring that goes all the way around the spectrum from yellow into green to cyan to blue to purple to magenta to red, orange, and back to yellow. So let's take a look at the color ring we just made with three pencils. If I take the yellow and the cyan and I start to mix those, first with more yellow than cyan, I get bright, vibrant spring greens mixed into medium value greens into a bluish green. Cyan just on its own is a bright sky blue color. But when mixed with a little bit of magenta, cyan and magenta actually make a dark blue. As the amount of magenta increases and the amount of cyan decreases, rich, vibrant purples appear. So this is where all the violets are. And magenta on its own is a bright pinkish color. If I start to add a little bit of yellow in with the magenta, I mix red. So red is not a primary color. It's a combination of yellow and magenta. As I start to add more yellow into that mix, I can mix various shades of orange to an orangey yellow to, again, back to just bright yellow on its own. So if you have those three primary colors in your palette, you're going to be able to take any color you put down and by putting layers of one or two of these colors over them, you'll be able to slightly change and slightly tweak those colors. So these colors are an essential part of your toolkit. If I'm using Prismacolor pencils, those three colors are True Blue, that's their cyan, Lemon Yellow, that is their yellow, and Process Red is their magenta. Other brands have different names. For instance, Faber-Castell, Phthalo Blue is the name of their cyan, Light Chrome Yellow is the name of their yellow, and although they have a pencil called Magenta, their fuchsia pencil is a better magenta for our purposes of color mixing. So make sure you have those three colors in your palette and see what happens if you start to mix some of your own color circles. Begin to take this color theory and use it to tweak and modify colors you get on your page. So if I've got something that's brown, but it needs to be mm, a little bit more yellow or a little bit more magenta or a little bit more cyan, I'll just take one of those three pencils, one of those three primary pencils, and just slightly modify that color that I've put down on the page. I can use words in really rich and descriptive ways to describe colors. I don't want to just say, oh, it's red. I want to think, is that more of a, a yellowish red? Is that more of a pinkish red? Maybe more of an orangish red? So when I'm saying any color, red, green, whatever it is, I want to add other words in there to describe it. So think about first in terms of, of the hue. Is it more of a, a red or is it the orange? Is it yellow? Or is it an orangish yellow? or is it a yellowish orange, right? So if it's a yellowish orange, it's mostly orange, but it's a little bit yellowish, right? If it's an orangish yellow, right, then it's mostly yellow, but a little bit orange. So you can use those words just to kind of push and pull your descriptions in a little bit more of a precise and accurate direction. Another thing you want to think about, and this is different than the color. So initially we're thinking like, what hue is it? But we want to think, is this a vibrant, bright color, or is this a dull, sort of subdued color, kind of getting more towards the browns and the grays? So an olive green is sort of a more grayish end. A vibrant, bright spring green, 
that kind of a color, um, that's a, this is a different kind of green. So it's not just whether it's a yellow green, it can be a yellow green um, and be more olivey, or it can be a yellow green and be more vibrant. So you want to think of how pure this color is. Is it just the bright, clean green, or is it a more muted color? So think about both of those, those, those axes when you're describing your color. First is, what hue is it? Greenish yellow or yellowish green? And then think how bright or dull it is, right? So is this a pure bright spring green or is this a dull muted grayish green? And that will help you be able to use words in a way that's a little bit more accurate. Another, another fun thing to do when you're describing color is say that it is the same color as, so if you can think of something that is the same color as this object that you're looking at, use those it reminds me of to make your color descriptions even better. Um, you can also, if your pencils have names on them, like what does it say on this one here? All right, uh, this one says, um, this one says, well, uh, dark red, All right? So I could say dark red. Sometimes they'll, they'll, they'll be like, you know, they'll say sepia on the brown or ochre. You're thinking like, what's an ochre? What's a sepia? And you can look at your pencils and say like, this one is called sepia. This one is called ochre. And so you can look at those pencil colors and use those to help enrich your color vocabulary as you're describing these colors. Really kind of challenging things to do are to try to get better at describing shades of brown, right? Shades of green. See what you can do to enhance your vocabulary in these areas to give a better color description. You combine those words with the colors that you can do with your pencils and you're gonna have a great time describing colors. It makes it more fun to have this bigger vocabulary and ways of engaging with color. And it also makes you a better observer. Because now you're gonna be looking at colors in different ways. Not just going like, oh, it's red. I'm gonna grab my red pencil and go, right? Stick red in there, mm -mm. right? Now we're going like, what kind of red is it? You can push that red, you can pull it. It's gonna be the deeper red or it's gonna be the lighter, brighter red. Okay, I'm gonna, and it's, it becomes a lot more fun. You'll see more. And you're also going to find that what you get down on your Nature Journal page um, becomes much more accurate and precise. Your Nature Journaling challenge this week is to find a colorful phenomenon that captures your attention and interest. Document, describe it in your journal. Remember, we've got a more specific way of using words to describe what we see. And we also have all of these tools with our colored pencils, ways of getting our colored pencils to match the colors that we see much more precisely. Spend a little bit more time playing with those colors and you're going to find that you start to look around and you will see colors in a different way. You'll see subtleties and variations that you've never noticed before. And it opens up a whole new world of discovery. Until next time, this is your Nature Journal Connection. Do do do.